Tonight is gonna be some change. There's no acting so deep. So stop acting and get it clapping. Only thing to make a thug smile in his dream will make me feel that I ain't as thug as I seem. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Huey was born around 1987 in Missouri. He grew up in a poor area filled with drugs, forcing him and his family to relocate to Walnut City in St. Louis when he was five. The move did not last long though, and in Huey's early teens, he returned back to Kinlock in St. Louis to find the city worse off than when they left. Because of the amount of inequality in Kinlock, those that had not left had no choice but to resort to crime to survive. There was always a lot of drugs going on, and, of course, a little bit of violence. But when I came back, the airport thing came about and the police was real bad. County police was coming out there, chasing people and shocking them with tasers. All kind of stuff happened. Before you knew it, it was like a ghost town. Huey was raised as the youngest of four children with a rough and troubled youth, vastly influenced by the social issues in his hometown and which he would later use as fuel for his lyrics. My mama and daddy were on drugs. My brother was in and out of jail. The foster people were chasing me. It was crazy. Growing up out there, it was crazy. As a childhood, I had a hard time, you know what I'm saying? But my mom's been strong out on, on drugs and all of that. Dad on the same thing, but now we, we headed for a new beginning, you know what I'm saying? Ever since, ever since I focused on my career. My mom been saved now for like, you know what I'm saying, 14 years, so she's doing great right now. You know what I'm saying? She under our baby boy 100%. But yeah, growing up out there is crazy. It's just like any other city. It's just on a different part of the map, man. You know, everybody got problems. Everybody got gunfights. Everybody got drama and all that. Of course, we got some beautiful things that happen in life too. Around 2003, when he was around 15 years old, the man began making beats and writing lyrics. He performed under the name Huey and Baby Huey, and often dropped beats with his friend on the block of Arlington Avenue. He didn't take it very seriously at first. This was until his brother introduced him to Angela Richardson, who had been cultivating a rap group at the time. Angela helped Huey get his name out there, finding toeholds in St. Louis clubs as well as college campuses and surrounding museums. Songs like Oh and early versions of his biggest hit Pop Lock and Drop It became local favorites of DJs and promoters. And Huey's mixtapes managed to start getting better distribution. Most of these mixtapes were unofficial and undocumented, but one, a certain unsigned hype, managed to completely sell out of its 8,000 copy run and eventually landed on the desk of TJ Chapman, CEO of TJ's DJs. Later, TJ introduced Huey to Mickey, Memphis Hits Wright, and AR at Jive Records, who was so impressed with Huey that he signed him to his Hits Committee imprint at the tender age of 18. Everybody kept saying that I should be doing this for a living. It was a gift, and it surely was a gift. Shortly after being signed to Jive, Huey dropped the biggest single of his career, Pop, Lock, and Drop It, as the lead single of his debut album. The single became a huge dance number and made it to number six in the Hot 100. The single continued to accrue accolades, earning a double platinum certification from the RIAA and spawning multiple remixes and even featuring in the movie Stomp the Yard. In addition, a promotional dance contest for the song and its accompanying video launched a dance move craze called the G5, everyone in the world putting their own spin on the dance to show who could pop, lock and drop it. I was just making a song that females could dance to, but there wasn't an actual dance until after I wrote it. Music scene in St. Louis was a straight job, man. First of all, DJs wasn't playing nothing that I just said play. Second of all, I had to work my record in the club. Third of all, in order to work my record in the club, I had to actually, you know what I'm saying, get into a good relationship with the DJs. Therefore, after I got into my relationship with the DJs, they played it. Then once they played it, radio ain't have no choice. So the record company in St. Louis, or the record business in St. Louis, was hard work. And in order for you to get where you want to do, be, you gotta put in hard work. And that goes for anybody. I don't care who you know, how you know it. 
If you're not putting in work, you might as well count for it. Soon after this, Huey finally dropped his debut album in the form of Notebook Paper. Despite the leading single from the album being strictly dance, the bulk of the album was solid gangster music and conscious records, which is probably why the album did not match the success of the single that dropped. The album picked it Album coming soon. We looking for it in June, man. It's called Notebook Paper and the whole, you know what I'm saying, concept behind it is basically placing real life stuff like, you know what I'm saying, your struggles, the stuff you done seen, stuff you done been through. And what you're doing and place it into that notebook and off of this notebook we're gonna make paper so i'm gonna call the album notebook paper you know what i'm saying and that's crazy got um t-pain yo Gotti, lloyd bow wow asia kid trail jazzy did tracks stargaze did tracks t-mix t-pain i mean the album is real crazy and Right now, you know what I'm saying, we grinding so we can shine, you know? Number 26 on the Billboard 200 and sold about 29,000 copies in the first week. Other singles off this project were When I Hustle featuring Lloyd and Tell Me This, neither of which placed meaningfully on the charts. On the tales of his album's lukewarm success, Huey, in all the wisdom of his youth, decided to take on the golden boy of R&B and hip hop at the time, Nelly. As the story goes, before Notebook Paper was released, Jive Records encouraged Huey to collaborate with Nelly, who at the time had already released three multi-platinum albums, as well as a diamond certified debut. Nelly, perhaps dealing with an overinflated ego, shot down the request to collaborate with Huey, mainly because Huey was still an up and coming artist. This is what Nelly had to say on the matter. Look here, dirty, it's not gonna happen. Especially with this being your first album, it's not gonna happen. This naturally wounded Huey's pride and started a feud between the two rappers. I'm only cool with Chingy and Jibs. Everybody else can kiss my ass. Nelly is disrespectful and arrogant. His head is as big as this f table I'm sitting at. He's on some arrogant, unsupportive bullshit. When he found out I got my deal, he didn't congratulate or anything. It's crazy because I can go out of town and get love. But when I go home, I can't get the same respect. But he's small talk. Following Nelly's rejection, Huey dropped the diss track, Down Down Baby. Bang, bang, at your gang. I don't f with you. Chop and hit you in that mother. A track riffing over one of Nelly's biggest hits, Country Grammar. In response, Nelly fired back on the song called Cut It Up with Pimp C and Sean Paul. Got a Buick that's green, the same color my snot. Little daddy you ain't shit, you might as well get off the pot. There's a new St. Louis? Yeah, that's funny. But I'ma stick with the old. The new don't make enough money. Daddy, you ain't the shit. You might as well get off the pot. It's a new St. Louis shit. Yeah, that's funny. But I'ma stick with the old. The new don't make enough money. Now after Cut It Up dropped, it caused tension amongst fans in St. Louis and sparked a barrage of locals to make YouTube videos calling for Nelly to be boycotted. In one video, fans could be seen calling the St. Lunatics part of the old St. Louis, while Huey was heralded as part of the new St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, Boy, yo, Street Status DVD, outside in the loop. Delmar Lou kicking and chilling. It says Nelly Day. We trying to see, man. We, got, we see Nelly here. We don't see the other side. So, old Lou, new Lou. It's all the same, man. We trying to see, man. Niggas is sending out bulletins all on MySpace, all on the net. Talking about 5:30. We are gonna be in front of Vintage Vinyl, breaking the CDs, the Nelly CDs, and all of that. New, ver new St. Louis versus old St. Louis, all of that. Huey then fired back with another track called Back At Ya and after this the beef seemingly blew over and according to the man himself, Huey thought the whole beef was a misunderstanding. On a more personal front, Huey was quietly having problems with his label. His musical releases were far and few between and yet he wasn't talking about it. Around 2007, he appeared on R. Kelly's Double Up on the song called Hook It Up. And around 2008, he dropped the non-album single 24-7-365 with Mayno and Glasses Malone. From Huey Records to CB 
The next year followed a similar fashion, with Huey only dropping one non-album single, Payo, featuring Joel Santana and Bobby Valentino. Hoping the stroke of this, I'm hoping it's tight as fuck And if it hurts, just let me know and I'll lie Yo, do you remember the time Bobby Valentino was caught with an escort? Yeah, that was a strange time Bobby V, y'all Bobby Valentino, running But I digress Around 2009, Huey narrowly escaped dying in a drive-by shooting An incident that left him rocked the bones. After attending Yo Gotti's birthday party in downtown St. Louis, he and a bunch of his old friends left the club together. The friends were in an SUV while Huey was following them in his signature Jaguar. The car stopped at a red light and another seemingly innocuous car pulled up to the SUV. In the third car, unbeknownst to Huey and his friends, were at least two gunmen who meant business. The gunman fired excessively into the SUV, killing the driver and two of the drivers before speeding up. Luckily for the artist, Huey was unscathed and aside from a case of severe shock, he was alright. I really don't know what happened or why it happened. We basically was at the club and we had a wonderful time. No problems, no altercations, no nothing. Once we left, the shots went off at the light. We were right behind them. It was hella loud. Luckily, my car didn't get shot. Naturally, considering Huey was an artist that was well known, a lot of people assumed that Huey was the target of the drive-by. It was just a rumor. You got all the opportunity in the world to shoot at my vehicle first. You passed me up, and you know whose car this is. Ain't nobody else got a Jaguar, so you know whose car it is. It's just if you're a popular person, and you're in the club, if anything happens, even if it's your homeboys, they going to say whose name first, Huey's. Unfortunately, shock was not the only side effect Huey suffered from the incident. He had been scheduled to perform with his old rival Nelly and the Say Lunatics after the shootout. But after the incident, the promoters dropped him from the bill. They claimed that they were concerned that the killers, who were never caught by the police, might strike again. And for the safety of all involved in the show, as well as the viewers, he had to be cut. This marked a low point in Huey's career and he resolved to get back on his feet. He quietly left his jive about a year or two before it folded without much fanfare and no public announcement. After that, he managed to secure another vague deal with EMI which was also not announced publicly. He also quietly began working on his next album. When speaking on his situation, he said the following. I had to get myself out of a bad situation no bad business or hard feelings. I just, it wasn't a place where I could continue to go on. Now that I got me a new situation, I feel more comfortable. I got a better team where everybody is humble and strong. So this album is definitely for me and my state of mind, where I feel I have to redeem myself for my fans. I know a lot of people missed me and I've missed them. Now I'm back and I'm not leaving anymore. Now after multiple delays, Huey finally released his next album, Redemption, around 2010. The album was a very personal one for Huey as he attempted to address the haters, internet blogs, and even spoke on the drive-by incident. They say Huey got dropped, you might be telling the truth, but really I released myself, I'm just telling the truth. However, unfortunately, the album was not quite the redemption he had hoped for as it missed the charts entirely. The lead single off the project was called Smile and Wave. At this point, Huey had pretty much fallen off, but he had refused to acknowledge it. Around 2011, he dropped his first signed mixtape called Who the F*** is Huey? And after that, Radio Silence. Now around 2013, it seemed like Huey had finally found a way to kickstart his career when he announced he was signing to Waka Flocka Flames, Brick Squad Monopoly imprint. Huey was immensely grateful for the signing and called it a blessing from God. And for a while, that seemed to be the case. Around 2014, he dropped the mixtape, Project H. But other than that, not much else materialized. Unfortunately, that was the last time Huey appeared in the headlines before he passed away. Around 2018, he dropped a number of singles, including In My World, Mattresses, Contagious, Sunrise, Rainstorm, and Calls. Bad bitch, but now she just had
has been I don't like a liar and I don't like sadness And then around 2020 he dropped a lot more singles He even launched a clothing brand However it never really got off the ground due to Huey's death now around 2020, Huey was shot to death in a drive-by shooting eerily similar to the one he survived around 2009. While Huey was standing outside of a home in his home city, a car drove by the location and fired multiple rounds into the crowd. Huey got hit, he was then sent to hospital and was pronounced dead shortly on arrival. And that's basically the story of Huey. And honestly, this reminds me of something Little Boosie said. According to Little Boosie, most rappers die in their own city. And such was the case with Huey. And, and it's always like that wherever you from, you will get hated the most. You know, most rappers die in their own city. It's a fact. And, um, you know, you have haters who, who was in school with you and, and they mad because they was, on, they was in, that, in that third grade class with you. But they don't have the same hustle as you. You know, they hate you for no reason. They hate you for... They hate you for your success. If you was a local rapper and you, and you didn't have much, they would love you. You know, and these people, you develop hatred in your own city. Huey gets about half a million monthly plays on Spotify. And his most listened to songs are Pop, Lock and Drop It, When I Hustle, and Nobody Loves the Hood. Have fun with what you're doing. And me, I do it because I do it. You know what I'm saying? When I was in the hood and I was doing whatever I was doing that, that, that may not have been right, I still was doing me as far as hopping in the studios like every day, um, still hitting those clubs, making my face be known, you know, and, and now it's no different. You know what I'm saying? This is just something that's, that's, that I was born with. So I have fun doing it regardless of, of what the next man got to say, you know what I'm saying? And that's why my motto is keep it moving and keep from losing, all right? That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to you in your opinion? Let me know down below. Video requests? Be sure to let me know down below as well. Near what happened to video dropping soon. Also add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time. Adios amigo.